Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and you guys all know how these videos start. But it's true, you just never know what you're going to capture when you tap that record button. In this sixth entry of the series, we're going to take a look at five more cursed pieces of footage recorded right before horror. To a fun joyride over the cities of India gone terribly wrong, to the absolutely insane Tianjin port explosion. So without any messing about, let's get right into it. Did you guys know that India's railway network is the second largest in the world, with over 82,000 miles of track and 8,100 train stations littered all across the country? The rails are an essential part of India's transportation infrastructure, with millions of people using it every day. In fact, it's estimated that around 18 million passengers travel on Indian trains daily. The railway system is often referred to as the lifeblood of India, as it plays a vital role in connecting people and goods across the country. Because trains are flying here, there and everywhere, it's slightly chaotic, with passenger trains often seen overflowing with numerous people hanging out on the sides. However, on June the 2nd, 2023, things would get slightly more than chaotic. An entire nightmare would unfold on the lines. At approximately 6.30 p.m. on that fateful Friday, two large passenger trains hurtled towards each other in the Balasore district in eastern India. The 1284 Coromandel Express, a steel behemoth, thundered from the Shalimar in Halra, West Bengal, destined for Chennai in Tamil Nadu. At the exact same time, the 12864 Bengaluru Hawra Express charged in the opposite direction, departing that night from Bengaluru in Bangalore, bound for Hawra. These leviathans were given the all clear on the tracks, allowing them to reach their maximum speed of 79 miles an hour, or around 128 kilometers an hour. As the clock neared seven o'clock, fate took a tragic turn. The Coromandel Express, still surging ahead on its up main line, suddenly had a green light illuminated to indicate that the train was about to switch tracks. Travelling at the maximum speed, with no time to react, the passenger train 12841 suddenly switched onto its parallel loop line. Sadly, sat on the parallel loop line was a stationary cargo train with six full carriages of iron. In a catastrophic instant, the Coromandel Express collided with it. There you can see uh, this train which changes tracks. You see it changes tracks. Now when it starts to change tracks, it comes and hits this uh, freight uh, train and that's where it starts to derail. While the cargo goods train just remained in place due to its heavy load, the Coromandel Express folded on itself in a zigzag pattern, instantly derailing 21 carriages. The impact actually launched the engine carriage directly above it. This then sent the rest of the train spilling all across the other tracks. Now this was bad enough, but just by pure chance, it just so happens that the train on the opposite line, the superfast Bengaluru Hauer Express, was passing by at that moment. The Hauer Express, also traveling at its maximum speed, collided with the derailed carriages on track three. This impact was also brutal. It derailed the first four carriages, sending the others pounding into themselves. Hundreds of people now found themselves stuck in a whirlwind of twisted metal, glass, and the dead. This horrifying footage was captured just before the first collision.
When everything had settled, a nightmare had unfolded. Two passenger trains had now derailed, killing many on impact. More than 15 fire rescue teams, 100 doctors, 200 police personnel, and 200 ambulances were mobilized. But when they got there, they found a scene of just pure devastation. Chaos and confusion as passengers and rescuers clamber over a train carriage on its side. They're looking for survivors. Bodies of the injured and the dead are taken from the site on foot. At least 80 people are believed to have died. Around 200 were trapped. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has already sent his condolences. Bodies laid piled on bodies and some carts had actually set a light. Virtually all of the dead were in the first three carts of the Coromandel Express, where many of the passengers were stood. Identifying the dead proved to be another issue. Most were burnt or pulverized beyond recognition. This forced the police to use victims' mobile phones, luggage, and other items on their body to help identify them. This traumatic event was labeled India's deadliest rail accident in a century, taking the lives of 293 passengers and injuring at least a thousand others. So what happened here? Why was the green signal given to move to the loop line when there was a stationary train sat there? Well, the only way this could have happened is if it was physically changed from the main office. Both trains are set to move on their fixed track and never usually move. An actual physical lever would have needed to have been pulled for the route interlocking system to move the train to that loop track. It's clear that the Coromandel Express had no idea that they were about to switch tracks or they wouldn't have been traveling at the maximum speed. The CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, delved a bit deeper. They found that there was no fault of the drivers, they weren't speeding on the tracks. So what actually happened? Well, on July the 7th, 2023, the CBI formally announced that they had arrested three railway officials in direct connection to the tragedy. They arrested the senior section engineer, another section engineer, and a technician. The trio were charged with culpable homicide, not amounting to murder, and destruction of evidence. The various newspaper just stated that this accident was caused from their actions. The court case, as far as I can tell, is yet to be held. But as always, I'm interested in all of your thoughts below. Hitting the gym and working out is meant to elevate your life, enhancing both your appearance, strength, and mental health. It's all positive. However, working out in the gym, using the equipment, and more specifically, doing heavy weights, carries its own set of risks. Sadly, it appears in this instance, these risks were either overlooked or just forgotten. This entry begins in Bali, Indonesia, on the 15th of July, in the Paradise Bali Gym in Sanor. 33-year-old powerhouse Justin Vicky, a nutritional advisor and personal trainer, decided that he would go to the gym and try some deadlifts and squats that day. Not only was Justin a bodybuilder, he also was an Instagram influencer with 40,000 Instagram followers. According to his friends, he had a glowing energy and a genuine desire to transform lives. The video captured that day shows Justin about to do a 210 kilogram squat. Justin poised himself as he grappled with the iron bar. He had a spotter behind him should the weight fall and it just looked like a normal squatting exercise just like you'd see in the gym. Justin does a couple of these squats before it's clear his strength is waning. The barbell gets lower and lower to the ground but the spotter doesn't seem to be of any assistance. As far as I'm aware, aren't they supposed to like grab the bar so it doesn't fall? Regardless, all of a sudden, Justin's legs buckled. This caused the weight of the barbell to fall to the ground 
bending his neck forward with the force of 210 kilograms in the process. The impact was brutal. The barbell struck Vicky's neck with violent force. The heavy weights broke his neck and back, severing vital nerves to his heart and his lungs. Within an instant, he had been internally decapitated. Despite the spotter's presence, it was clear that he was not correctly prepared for this task. It's possible that he just wasn't paying attention or he just didn't know what he was doing. However, I'm no bodybuilder, I've no idea. The barbell was instantly moved from Justin's neck, but by then the damage was done. Justin went into spasm and was rushed to the hospital. However, his condition was critical. He was rushed into theatre for an operation, but sadly, Justin slipped into a coma, succumbing a day later at the ripe age of 33. His cause of death was a broken neck. He found his final resting place at a family plot in East Java, his parents' hometown. This crazy video was filmed in West India on the bright sunny day of the 23rd of March, 2023, in the bristling city of Danbad, located approximately 185 miles from the Bangladeshi border. On that bright March afternoon, at approximately 4.50 p.m., an experienced pilot, along with his 14-year-old passenger, hopped into their Pipstral Sinus, a two-seater ultralight aircraft, located at the Barwada Airstrip in Danbad. That day, the teenager was visiting his father in Danbad when he decided he'd take a joyride to see the city from the air, organized by a private flight company in Danbad. Now this would be a simple 10 minute flight, a flight that was done many times per day. The footage in question shows the small aircraft propeller start up before racing off the Barwada airstrip and straight into the air. All recorded by the passenger, it shows the plane flying without fault. Taking in the beautiful views, it looks like a lot of fun. However, this only lasts for around a minute, until all of a sudden, the engine can be heard conking out. Within literally minutes of taking off, the propeller can be seen coming to a stop, and all power to the engine was lost. Despite several attempts to restart it, the engine seemed to have failed. The aircraft was now essentially a glider. All seen in the video, the pilot could be seen making split-second decisions that would ultimately decide whether they live or die. Instead of attempting to turn back to the original runway, the pilot makes a decision to glide the aircraft towards a controlled crash. Knowing that a 14-year-old was in the passenger, I can only imagine the pressure. As it lost altitude, no word could be heard coming from the pilot. All seen in the footage, the plane goes slowly down, coming dangerously close to a large motorway before slamming into a small residential house in eastern Danbad. The plane landed on the roof of the house before falling to the ground. Luckily, nobody was inside at the time the family was actually outside and witnessed the entire thing happen. In the crash, the pilot and the teenager were severely injured. They were rushed to hospital with life-threatening injuries and in hospital, they continued their recovery. But by some pure miracle, nobody else was injured and thankfully, due to the pilot's quick thinking and calm demeanor, they both walked out alive. Now, I'm no pilot, but some people speculate that this pilot in the video made several severe mistakes. 
from allowing the passenger to rest his feet under the passenger controls to failing to crash in an open space rather than a residential community. But as always, I'm interested in your thoughts below. This entry begins on New Year's Day in 2018. That day, a courageous group of two climbers and a guide embarked on a daring ascent of Table Mountain, a rugged icon of Cape Town, South Africa. Sadly, they had no idea that this fun climb would end in total tragedy. Table Mountain, standing approximately 1,086 meters or 3,563 feet above sea level, is often hailed as one of the world's oldest mountains, with its sandstone formations estimated to be over 300 million years old. This natural wonder has an amazing array of flora and fauna, some of which can only be found on this mountain. Due to its amazing history and unique plant life, Table Mountain is visited by 4.2 million locals and tourists each year. While most opt for the safety of the cable car to get to the top, some daring souls are drawn to the challenge of conquering its perilous slopes by hand. This trio were no exception. The climbing group that day consisted of a 29-year-old Japanese tourist, a very seasoned 61-year-old local guide, and one more female unnamed climber. After some deliberation, they all opted for the Arrow final route, a route that is famous as one of the most demanding and hazardous trails up Table Mountain. This path demands skillful navigation through rocky outcrops, massive boulders, culminating in a precarious footpath to its summit. As the trio ascended, the air grew frigid. The winds howled and the sun dipped below the horizon, causing an eerie amber hue to span across the mountain's face. Despite this, they continued climbing while other tourists watched in terror from the cable cars. This eerie footage was captured from a passing cable car. Gasps could be heard from within as the passengers noticed the dangerous position that the climbers were in. They were suspended on a near vertical cliff face with just a small rope tethering them together. Tragically, just moments after this video was recorded, tragedy struck with brutal force. It's believed that the guide suddenly lost his footing and sadly, because they were all tethered by ropes, the guide brought the other climbers down with him too. By some absolute miracle, the other two climbers managed to stop their fall. They hung there precariously on a ridiculously tiny ledge praying for survival. Sadly, however, on this tiny ledge, two out of the three climbers succumbed to their injuries and slipped into cardiac arrest. This forced the last remaining climber to attempt to give CPR on the side of a mountain. I would say that's the very last place you want to give or receive CPR. Unfortunately, their injuries from the fall proved insurmountable. The 61-year-old guide and the 29-year-old tourist died right there on the side of the mountain before rescue could even be called. This left the third member of their party stranded alone on the side of a mountain with two corpses and 800 other people that were also visiting that day who were told to stay in their cable car until rescue had arrived. With remarkable skill and precision, a rigging system was established from the cable car above enabling rescue operators to extract her from her precarious perch. Once she was off the mountain, she was rushed to hospital where she later recovered from her injuries. However, the memory of this climb is something that I think she will never forget. Table Mountain, with its rich history and unparalleled views, is not to be underestimated. It stands as a testament to the untamed beauty of nature. This 
absolutely insane footage begins on August the 12th, 2015, in the huge seaside port of Tianjin, China, nestled next to the Bohai Sea, approximately 84 miles from Beijing. Tianjin is one of the largest ports in northern China and one of the largest in the world. It's vital to China's economy and China's status as one of the largest exporters. While it is commercialized, it's also a metropolis with vast skyscrapers, home to 11 million people. The port is Beijing's access to the sea, allowing goods from ships to be brought to land and then to Beijing. Tianjin exports and imports a wide variety of things in and out of China, from cars to building supplies to hazardous chemicals. In the northwest corner of the port sat a huge warehouse about the size of 10 football pitches. This warehouse was owned by Ruha International Logistics and in August of 2015, inside sat vast piles of lethal hazardous chemicals. Chemicals such as potassium nitrate and sodium cyanide and other various explosive chemicals. Chinese law states that no more than 25 tons of these explosive chemicals should be stored at one place. However, in that warehouse, there were over 3,000 tons of hazardous substances, including 800 tons of sodium cyanide and 1,300 tons of potassium nitrate. Just a reminder, the limit is 25 tons. These two chemicals are extremely explosive. It was a deadly recipe for disaster. Around 11 p.m. on August the 12th, as many tucked into bed, multiple emergency calls were received stating that a fire had broken out in one of the warehouses in the port, very similar to Beirut, which I also covered on this channel. Multiple fire trucks rushed to the scene, but at first they weren't sure what was stored in the warehouse, so they tackled it with water. But this was a huge mistake. The chemicals reacted violently to water. This caused the flames to intensify dramatically, spreading to further parts of the warehouse. Around 30 minutes after the first call, the warehouse exploded, sending a huge fireball into the air. This first explosion was so powerful, it even triggered seismic sensors, measuring 2.1 on the Richter scale. However, this first explosion was nothing compared to what was coming. 30 seconds after the first blast, an absolutely colossal explosion occurred, measuring 2.9 on the Richter scale. The entire warehouse, containing the 3,000 tons of chemicals, went up in a red fireball. A plume of smoke that looked like a nuclear bomb rose hundreds of meters into the air. This could even be seen from space. Eyewitnesses at the time had no idea what they'd just witnessed. They thought they'd just seen a nuclear bomb. It was that insane. Every piece of glass in a two kilometer radius shattered. Skyscrapers and buildings wobbled on their foundations and power all across the city dropped out, leaving millions in darkness with just a huge plume of fire illuminating the night sky. Firefighters battled to tackle the blaze and when the ravenous flames finally died down, the warehouse was completely gone. In its place sat a huge crater 
The blast had leveled the entire section of the port. Evidence of damage could be seen from miles away. An aerial footage showed a scene of just pure destruction. While ash and fumes descended from above, dangerous chemicals seeped into the ground. Residents within three kilometers were forced to evacuate due to the risk of toxins leaching into their water supply. This explosion turned out to be one of the world's largest artificial non-nuclear explosions ever recorded, equal to 300 tons of TNT. It caused more than 1 billion US dollars worth of damage taking the lives of 173 people. This included 104 firefighters that were running towards the danger in order to save lives. So who's to blame? First off, the firefighters had no idea what they were fighting. Because they tried tackling it with water, this reacted very badly with one of the chemicals that was in the warehouse. It reacted with this chemical, creating a potent explosive gas. This built up within the warehouse and this is the reason it exploded so violently. However, the real culprit is Ruhai International, the company that owned the warehouse. Not only were they storing vast amounts of hazardous chemicals, way, way past the legal limit, but they were also storing deadly flammable chemicals right next to other explosive materials. The initial fire began due to negligence of a chemical that was incorrectly stored it dried out and spontaneously combusted. It was truly a disaster waiting to happen. The surrounding communities were in crisis. Many people were angry at the fact that the company had been so careless, questioning why they would store so much so close to residential areas. China officials investigated profusely and in 2016, they brought to justice 49 individuals, 25 government officials and 24 company managers. The punishments ranging from one to two year jail sentences. The Ruhai Logistics Chairman, however, Yu Zui, was found guilty of paying bribes that allowed his company to sidestep safety regulations when storing these various deadly chemicals. He was fined 700,000 yen, or around 100,000 US dollars, and handed a suspended death sentence for his part in the disaster. This is equivalent to life in prison in China. Now, eight years on from this disaster, the port of Tanjan looks to be fully rebuilt. However, the horror of this tragedy has forever been burnt into the memories of all that witnessed it. May the people featured in this tragedy and this video rest in peace. But that is the end of this video. As always, I'm interested in hearing all your thoughts below. I do try and read every single comment. The blast footage left me just truly speechless. I can't even imagine witnessing anything like that with my own eyes, and I hope I never have to. But just before I go, if you're into true horror list style content such as this, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and make sure you click in that notification bell to be alerted at when I release content such as this. But I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.